Hey everybody, welcome back to Cityscape Brewing. In this episode, we're gonna go through how to clean your tap faucets for your kegerator and step-by-step -step how to break them down and how to clean them and sanitize them properly. So let's get right into it. This uh, kegerator behind me has four taps. I'm gonna go through cleaning one of them, but uh, we'll do all four of them eventually today. To get started, we're gonna need a um, faucet wrench. This will loosen the collar up around the uh, faucet to release it. But first you need to actually um, disconnect the beer lines from your kegs uh, and or turn off the pressure and bleed all the kegs at one of the two. I prefer just to take the um, hoses right off of the kegs, leave them pressurized, uh, but then add it back on after the fact. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna shut the gas off and then we'll start cleaning the faucets. All right, I've disconnected the beer draft lines and they're actually sitting there in the uh, uh, cleaner right now. So I have some OxyClean in there in a bowl and I'm gonna let those sit in there to loosen up the, um, uh, the uh, attachments so they are less sticky and loosen up all the moving parts inside of there. So let those get clean and I'm gonna go ahead and remove the faucets with our faucet wrench. All right, so you just take your uh, wrench here and you put it on, you hold the tap still, and then you loosen it up with the rest of your hand and this will pop right off. So same thing with all the rest of them. Just remove these. And as long as you have your CO2 and your beer lines disconnected, it won't push beer out of there. You might have some drips and stuff coming from the residual stuff in the line or a little bit of pressure that was in the line, but it shouldn't come spraying out. If you forget to disconnect the line or bleed the CO2 um, from the tank, it will be pressurized and therefore it will push the beer uh, out of these lines. So you want to make sure you do that ahead of time. So let's go ahead and start cleaning these up. All right, now that we got them all off of the uh, refrigerator, we're going to go through and start taking these apart. Um, I use these little cap covers. These help little flies and other critters from crawling up into the faucets when they're sitting outside since this is in my garage. Um, and sitting in the garage, they're kind of susceptible to getting, you know, mold or mildew. It's hot in the summertime, especially in the wintertime, it's not as much of an issue. So you do want to do this pretty regularly to, to uh, make sure that you're not growing any nasties and, and then eventually pouring a beer and getting that in your drink. So. Um, I like to do these about once a month. Sometimes it's a little bit more or less depending on the weather and the humidity. And uh, uh, in the wintertime, I do it a few times less. But let's go ahead and break one of these things down. So I get the caps. I'm going to have three buckets in front of me here. One is with the cleaner. You can use OxyClean or PBW that's here. Um, the other one is just water. And then the other one is filled with sanitizer. So at first, we're just going to go ahead and throw everything right into the cleaner, the OxyClean, and we're going to let this soak. So you have your tap handle. Um, sometimes you can use wood. These are just the poles for the top. You have a, uh, you have the uh, um, saddle or whatever you want to call this piece that goes in between the, the tap handle uh, and the faucet itself. Then you have the collar that goes next after that. Take that off here. Put that in there. There is a, a few O-rings. When you pull this next piece out, this is the uh, the lever that goes up for the, the handle. There's a black tension O-ring, friction O-ring, and then there's the ball washer. So a friction washer and a ball washer, or that's what these are called here. This one will fit around the kind of rounder part that's on the bottom of this. Here, uh, when we're putting this back together, I'll have a little bit more zoomed in look for, for you to show you, show you what all these pieces look like. Um, but there are two washers. Sometimes I leave them right on here just to soak so um, they don't kind of get lost in the in the shuffle here because the uh, um, they're easier to lose than the other ones, especially if you're doing this in a sink. So put that right in there. The next piece you want to push from the front and uh, kind of take this piece out. This is the shaft that's inside. This is actually what's stopping your beer from coming in and out. Uh, as you pull the handle in this thing, this will pull back and it'll allow beer to flow around this uh, gasket and then it comes out the faucet the other side. So do that. And then this is the actual faucet body itself. I'm just gonna throw that right in there as well. And so we'll do that for the next uh, three, and then we'll go through and actually use this brush to kind of clean a few of them up. 
All right, we got all of our tap faucets um, soaking in the um, OxyClean formula. I have a little wire brush here. What I'm gonna do next now is while these things are soaking and get all the nasties out, as you can tell, there's already some kind of gross stuff that was coming out of a few of them because it's been kind of hot in the garage lately. Um, this is kind of working some of that stuff loose, eating up all the proteins and stuff that are built up on the inside, getting all the sticky stuff off. But what we're gonna do is just go through one at a time and as these are continuing to soak, just take our wire brush, we're gonna get through all of the faucets. As you can tell, I kind of color code mine so I know where they go back onto the, um, uh, in the beer lines and things that go through the fridge. Um, you don't have to do that. There are two different kinds of faucets. This is kind of a standard faucet. There is a forward sealing faucet and that actually helps prevent some of the molding and stuff that you can experience because uh, you won't have all of the open airways in here where uh, the forward sealing ones uh, seal more forward as the name implies and it has less uh, room for kind of nasties to get into the faucet area here uh, and gum things up. And so um, in this case, I'm showing the standard faucet as these are what most people have. Um, but these are uh, probably the most common faucets you can get online as well too. So go ahead and use the brush. I go through the back side from the bottom side as well. And then also uh, from the uh, handle side, there are a couple of kind of air holes that are on the bottom side here. You're gonna try to get those kind of cleaned out too because there can be stuff just like this one has a little bit of gummed up stuff in there. There's an air hole right here uh, that kind of goes in between uh, where the uh, shaft comes through. So you wanna make sure that those are clean. And if you need a smaller brush or a toothpick or something like that, you can get those out as well. So um, clean through real good your, your faucet itself. And then I'm gonna put this back in here. So I'm not gonna put this in the clean water just yet. I'm gonna make sure I get through like everything that's in here. The next uh, piece that you're gonna wanna make sure you get real clean is the <clears throat> one with the two O-rings on it. I just generally will kind of go around and scrub the part that's in the faucet itself along with the O-rings. The part that is up here threads onto the tap handle part, so it's less likely to have any nasties on it, but it does get beer and stuff on it, so I kind of scrub the whole thing. And I try to keep the O-rings on there unless they look a little gummed up, then I'll kind of take them, but you can replace these if they're starting to look cracked or worn out, um, but I just give them a good look over and um, if you're taking care of them and not tightening that too much, these O-rings should last quite a while. The next part that you'll want to make sure you're cleaning is the shaft uh, itself. There's kind of an interior area here and try to get really good in between there because that gets some kind of nasty gummed up stuff as well. So um, get, make sure you get a small enough brush to be able to get in between here real good. And then uh, it's really important to get the shaft and where this uh, ball um, gasket is too because that's all kind of open to the air elements from this port forward. And then this is where the beer stops. And so making sure you clean this real good is important. Um, but make sure you uh, go through, I give everything a scrub down and then I let it sit in here for about 10, 15 minutes just to really eat everything else off. I'll give the, sh the shaft bodies themselves another real good scrub. And then they're gonna go into the uh, just plain water bucket to rinse off. And then once those get rinsed off, then they're gonna go into the sanitizer. And once I get all of these cleaned up, put them uh, from one bucket to the other into the sanitizer, then I'll show you how to uh, put these things back together. All right, now we got everything cleaned and sanitized and we're about to um, put all of these back together. And I kind of have them laid out in the order to show you the, the pieces individually. So you have your uh, regular tap handle, and this could be wood in some cases. In this case, uh, it just comes with these plastic ones a lot of times. This is called the collar and this is called the bonnet. There is a friction washer, a ball washer, which slides over the round part of this, which is the faucet lever, the faucet body, and then this is the shaft assembly with the washer that's built into this uh, at the end. And then this is just a cap for the top after we get all said and done. There is also another washer that's in the inside here that goes towards the uh, shaft that goes into the uh, in my case, the refrigerator itself or your kegerator. So let's go ahead and start assembling this. The first thing that you're gonna do is put the shaft inside. There is this hole here, you need to make sure that it's face up. Okay, you'll put that inside. Um, you'll get your 
lever two washers on there. There's a rounder side of this washer, the ball washer that goes on first. Make sure that goes on to the point where it's not, if it's upside down, it won't slide over the top of the ball and you'll be able to tell that. Um, so go ahead and do that. Then you'll have the friction washer go on there and then you'll have the bonnet that will go on after that to screw this down. But you'll wanna put this thing uh, with the same direction into the shaft assembly that's inside and then kind of press that ball washer inside. This should be laying, the friction washer should be laying flush on the top of this before you put the collar on it. So go ahead and put your collar on and screw that down. It doesn't need to be super, super tight. It just needs to be snug because you want to still be able to move this back and forth once you get everything on. So don't tighten that down too much. Then you'll put your um, collar on it and that just screws down again, just snugly. And then you'll put your tap handle back on. And then in my case, I use these little covers just to keep uh, you know, flies and nasties and stuff from getting inside here. I'll put that on there. But this should be able to move pretty freely. If it moves too freely, you can always tighten it up, you know, um, loosen all this again, tighten this up or loosen it up depending on if you have it too tight. But again, you don't wanna do it too tight because you should be moving, but you do wanna make sure that it's snug. So. That is how you reassemble one of them. I'm gonna reassemble my other three and then we'll put them back onto the keg. All right, while we have these things off and the tap panels, before we put them back on, I do like to kind of clean up the area a little bit. I have a little bottle of scar sand and I just like to go ahead and, and spray in here a little bit. Um, make sure that these get cleaned up real good around the edges too. So I'll take some uh, paper towels and even dip them in some cleaner sometimes. Make sure these are real good and clean. Clean up underneath and around the uh, shafts that go into the refrigerator here. Make sure that the, there's no kind of nasties on there. You shouldn't necessarily need to take these off all that often to clean these um, because there's uh, essentially beer uh, running out of these lines. But I will take the, uh, the brush sometimes and just kind of give it a quick little brush in here and then hit it one more time with sanitizer just to make sure that all that stuff's good and cleaned out kind of flushes out anything that might be have gotten in there while these are off as well so not that it's going to ruin your beer but you don't want to drink it right so let me get these all cleaned up again all right now to put these things back on i'm going to start from the same direction i went because we have to tighten them uh, in that direction and it's easier with to go the direction that where there's no tap handles if i started on this side i'd be kind of hitting the other handle that i already put on as i tighten it down so i'm going to start over here uh kind of hand tighten it till it's straight and then uh use your wrench to kind of give it a, a good snug fit and so you don't have to have these things over tightened you don't want to do that it's just going to squeeze uh the amount in between the refrigerator wall, but they should be snug enough where you're not obviously leaking beer out of them. <clears throat> Grab a second one here. Again, tighten that up. Hand tighten that first. And kind of straight up and down and then use your wrench to wrench it in place. So All right, back inside the fridge. Remember, we had cleaned our uh, beer line uh, connections uh, in the cleaner. So I'm gonna actually just dunk them quick. Also in the sanitizer, kind of rinse those off. Make sure that before they go on the keg that we get anything that shouldn't be on there out of there. It helps loosen the, the connections too. So I'm gonna go ahead and reattach these back onto the keg. Again, that's why I use the color uh, zip ties on here. So I can easily tell which keg these go back onto. Um, obviously some of them, the color you can tell but the gas lines also have these color-coded um, zip ties that helps me when I'm digging through all of the hosing to know which keg, which handle goes to which one. Uh, kind of a, a trick to kind of not mess yourself up as you're going through your, all the different hoses. And as you're hooking them back up, make sure you have those fully closed because I did not. And as you can tell, I had a little uh, leaking faucet here, even blew off the little cap there, but we got to shut off right away. But make sure these are in the off position. I had it uh, just uh, slid open a little bit and it poured some beer out. All right, the last thing that I do after I uh, 
make sure I got all these things connected is actually pour out just a little bit of each one of the uh, beers to get the stuff that was both from the post inside at the keg and what's in the faucet and make sure there's no star sand in there. Not that it would hurt you, but you don't want to be drinking that either. So I just poured a little bit from each of the taps out into here. Just to kind of get things moving along again. Um, and then one tip, I don't have anything in this last uh, tap here, so that's going to be a new beer. One thing too is to keep these things clean each time after each use is I actually keep a bottle of star sand out here. When I'm done uh, having a couple beers for the night, what I'll do is take this and actually spray up into the taps themselves. And I keep some uh, uh, paper towels down there. And then I'll actually take these caps and I'll do the same thing. And I'll pour a little bit of that out and I'll seal them up. This actually prevents them from, you know, getting any mold or nasties and stuff that's in there growing. It'll wash out into the old beer. And then I kind of just give them a little spray on the front too, because there are little holes underneath there in the front. And then they sit like this until I'm ready to have another beer. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video on how to clean your faucets. Uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Um, the mission is to help you brew better beer and become better home brewers. Until next time, happy brewing.